go, go. For as long as he can remember, Eric Zima wanted to play football. What, what was it about football? Whenever I go to the park or something when I was a little kid, I'd always try and go push over kids or see if they'd fall or something. Or, I don't know why, but I guess that's, that's what made me just fall in love with football. His parents, Bridget and Jim, were on board. The day he came home from his first tackle practice, he said he was beaming and he just said, it's the first time I can hit someone and not get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. Everyone knew Eric was good, a real standout. He's a very good player. Uh, he's a playmaker. He's got good speed, good ball skills, made plays in every game. But what Eric and his parents did not know was that this seemingly healthy 17-year-old boy had a major problem with his heart. Just seconds after a touchdown scored late in the third quarter of this game, Eric felt something unusual in his chest. I was running down the field and all of a sudden it just like hit me. All of a sudden I lost my breath. My heart felt like it was pounding, almost like coming out of my chest. And I tried to, I made it off the field and just like collapsed. The first thought was a possible concussion. But in fact, Eric had nearly suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. Now, if you're shocked, then consider this. A young athlete dies from a cardiac incident every three days in the United States. That's according to a 2011 University of Washington study. While concussions can lead to long-term neurological problems, underlying heart problems are much more likely to kill and fast. For many, the first time they ever sense anything is wrong is just seconds before their heart fails. For Eric, a simple EKG revealed Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, WPW. It's an underlying heart condition where the heart beats wildly due to abnormal electrical patterns. It's one of several congenital heart conditions that often go undetected. Here's the problem right here. I mean, it's, it may be hard to see, but it's this little downward slope. It seems minor, but that was the problem that Eric had that could potentially lead to a catastrophic issue with his heart. Eric was treated successfully with a procedure known as catheter ablation. But Eric's story, along with many others, raises what has become a surprisingly controversial issue in sports. If Eric's pre-existing heart problem could have been identified with a simple EKG, why isn't this test made available to all young athletes? Oh, this is sticky. Eric is back today, a year later, for a follow-up test with his doctor, pediatric cardiologist Rajiv Varma. They give you credit for, for essentially saving their son. No, that's not me. I'm just a minor portion of that. Well, you, 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 you found something that was an abnormality that, that could have led to a sudden cardiac death in Eric. Yes, it could have. And Dr. Verma is firmly in the camp that EKG screening could have detected this in Eric and perhaps countless others currently playing sports. But for most school districts in the United States today, current screening includes things like listening to the heart, blood pressure measurements, family medical history, but no EKG. Now with any screening test, there are limitations, false positives, false negatives, and the cost, anywhere between $25 to $150 per test, multiplied by nearly 8 million high school students playing sports. Putting it all together, the American Heart Association does not recommend EKGs as a screening tool, telling us, quote, initial screening using electrocardiograms to detect underlying genetic and congenital heart disease has not been shown to save lives. I don't agree with that. Um, I, I think any child who is uh, involved in uh, middle uh, school, high school sports should have an electrocardiogram. But to make the case, Verma and many others point to studies like this one out of Italy where EKG screening is mandatory. Here, they found an 89% reduction in sudden cardiac deaths among athletes between the ages of 12 and 35. Should get an electrocardiogram. It's no surprise, but Jim and Bridget are advocates for EKG screening. It takes five minutes. It's an e very easy. It's not evasive. On today's exam, everything checks out. Good news for Eric. I always tell my children, and he's my child, they should play to their heart's content, but with a healthy heart. Good. Here we go, guys. And by the afternoon, Eric is once again back on the field. Good job. Good job. 
All right, so we're doing it within the context of sports and football, but really it goes far beyond that, Doc, because this is about uh, having a young heart, but doesn't mean it's a perfect heart, and anything that's high energy could trigger this suddenness. So what is the chance that we get these EKGs made more routine for younger people? Uh, well, right now, I mean, as you saw, the American Heart Association is not in favor of this. Uh, several reasons, because of the fact that false positives could exist. You find something that isn't really there, or, or false negatives. You miss something. And then the cost issue, as, as I mentioned, 8 million high school athletes. But, Chris, you, you make an important point. The, the American Heart Association always, also says, look, this occurs in the general population, not just among high school athletes. So do, you, do you screen those people as well? Uh, they're still trying to figure this out, but there are many who say we should be screening high school athletes. That's when a lot of these sorts of heart problems are uncovered. The, the body's really active now for the first time for a lot of these people playing a high school sport. Mm -hmm. It could unmask a heart problem that existed all along, but it had never been a problem for them. And, uh, Doc, as you often and others argue all the time, cost is about how much profits companies are allowed to make, not about what's the best, best course of uh, good health. Doc, thank you very much. Appreciate the you reporting on this. We'll continue the story. Always good to see you, my friend.